Hello and welcome to Vibratrek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to this studio space here in the Northwoods of Maine. On this edition, I'm going to celebrate my birthday with you as well as a solar eclipse, a full solar eclipse. I want to update you on a project bag I've been working on and there will be chat about some knitting. A deep heartfelt thank you to all those that contribute financially to this project, whether that's through coffee or Patreon. I am deeply appreciative and humbled. I'm so glad that you're all here. Let's catch up. is a winding road no telling where it goes driving through days and nights won't stop for traffic lights and i i really want to know really want to know if i let me figure out where the road goes even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down
Well, as you can see, I've made some progress on my Marshmallow sewing kit. If you've been with me and you were able to tune into the last episode, I was making decisions about the lining and how I was going to assemble it. So I give you a little context about my vocal quality today. I am combating a cold, which doesn't seem to get in the way of anything else in my life but talking. And so I'm going to uh, ask for your flexibility uh, as I navigate the interruptions that that might incur and the overall quality of the sound. But let's talk about the project. So as you saw, I used a steam -a seam to adhere the lining to the outer portion of the project. And I did that to reduce the amount of stitching and bulk, um, especially as I went into assembly. On my other projects that I've done uh, with this, I, I've just stitched it down. <clears throat> but again, like I said, I really wanted to reduce the amount of bulk in the seams and um, allow that to be <clears throat> easily manageable in the sewing machine so I didn't have all of this different fabric moving around. I think it also helped with the integrity of the wool <clears throat> and I think it's created a lot of structure in the bag. So I'm quite happy with the steam -a seam uh, addition to the process. The thing that happened is I got ahead of myself and instead of adding the embellishments prior to steam -a seaming the lining to the front, I forgot to add these pieces. But I think I'm going to be able to hand applique them on. and. Honestly, I'm actually quite glad because I really love the lining of this and I just love the bit of kind of contrast surprise you get when you open it up. And so if I'd added more of this felt, you would have that would have gotten lost a bit, I think. So I'm happy with that mistake. And as I said, I'm going to try to be a creative problem solver and stitch it down. You'll see that I'm using my sew tight magnets to hold that on, which is a great tool if you are a hand stitcher or appliqueer or English paper piecing or actually for anything. I find the magnets um, much easier to work with than the pins. The other decision I needed to make, or I thought I had made, but of course it's changed, is I was going to bind the edges or the live edges of the bag in just a binding like I would a quilt. And ultimately when I sat down to do it and I, I had a little bit of um, Norwegian wool braid that I'd used in my previous uh, projects, I put that up to the edging and I, I just knew that that would really finish the bag and it is what I wanted. It lended that kind of fairy tale folk feel and I felt like if I just did it in a plain linen it kind of lost a little bit of that. And so I went ahead and ordered some Norwegian wool braid from the Woolly Thistle. So glad that Corinne is carrying that. Uh, it's great for not only steaking, but for other hand stitching um, and making projects. And she had the uh, design I wanted and the width that I needed for finishing the edges. Just a side note, I do have an affiliate link with the Woolly Thistle, so if you are shopping with Corinne for wool or books or other notions, <clears throat> you can shop through that link and it does send back a bit of uh, bonus cash to me um, without any cost to you. So you can support this project through that link if you so choose. It is listed down below. Um, but anyway, I was super excited to find that here. Um, I was able to get two yards of that, which is basically what I needed for this whole kit. <clears throat> I will need to line the top of the pocket, the outer edge of the pocket, and then all the way around. And then as you saw, the last thing I needed is a bit of cordage to wrap and keep the bag closed. And I was doing that with my Lucette. And if you have not had an opportunity to uh, do this, then I would highly recommend that you give it a try. Um, this is a great way to make beautiful cordage in multiple sizes. The only limiting factor that you have on your Lucette is this hole right here, which is what the cordage has to feed through. So as you can see on this particular piece, I could do super chunky, roving, um, <clears throat> etc. So it's a great way to use up scraps um, and it, these embellishments are great for tassels and hats and cordage and piping <clears throat> and all those things. Um, so I'm going to do the cordage in this beautiful um, gold. Um, this is wool from uh, Jaggerspun who I visited a little earlier this year and it's wool that I've used for weaving in the past so it's worsted um, prepared and worsted spun. So that is where this project stands. I'm waiting on that trim to arrive. I'm going to work on the um, 
wrap ties, and then that will be finished. And what a nice uh, thing to have done and off the plate. It, I don't know why it took me so long. I think I get <clears throat> bogged down in some of the stitching decisions, um, but I'm looking forward to making my next one very soon. It is a momentous day. I have a finished sweater to share with you that is for me, not for the children, for me. Uh, before I talk about that, I want to extend my deep gratitude for those that contribute financially to this project, whether that's through coffee or Patreon. I am uh, deeply appreciative and humbled and encouraged. So thank you so much. If you have liked the video or shared uh, on YouTube, uh, thank you again for helping to create some traction around this project. And if you're interested in supporting this work, uh, a Patreon subscription does um, include extra bonus content every month um, in the form of a studio vlog. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But let's talk about the sweater. This is a mashup. If you've been with me, you'll know a lot about it. Um, uh, the High Low Sweater by Deb Parcella for Title Yarns and the Salalu Sweater for uh, from the book Knitted Kalevala by Yetta Cosette. And I... The construction of the original sweater didn't appeal to me or to, I think, my overall frame. And so I was happy to use... Um, the high-low as a canvas to work on. And so I basically knit the high-low um, number for number, letter for letter. Um, it is a top-down raglan. And then at the bottom, I was able to finagle the numbers <clears throat> and add the color work chart. I'm never sure if the microphone is picking that up and add the color work chart. Um, it is, all the ends are woven in, it's been blocked and I've been wearing it. It's the perfect weight for this season, which is uh, spring here in um, Northern Maine. And I really love the neckline. Everything just fits really nicely, um, especially once it was given a nice kind of once over when it was wet. Um, so I can wear this with a tank top underneath. Um, it's It's got um, presence on the skin and it's kind of crunchy, but it's not, coarse or hairy um, or agitating so for me uh, so anyway I'm thrilled to have this done and I am a little bit sad to let go of some title yarns I usually have I've been working with title yarns now for almost well this has been almost a year and then before that I had knitted a Ronia Hakalito shawl which I can't the name eludes me right now, um, but I used her title four ply for that as well. So that's Patricia of Title Yarns. The show season will be starting here soon. You'll be able to find her at the Fiber Frolic in Maine and New Hampshire Sheep and Wool. And I do believe she does in Maryland as well. So <clears throat> she'll be getting back on the road and busy. Title Yarns can't go wrong. And yeah, 
So I'm looking forward to thumbing through the Knitted Kalevala again to see if there's another thing. If you've been with me, you know I did try to knit another sweater from that, but ran out of yarn and it kind of became a, a thing and I let it go, but maybe it's time to revisit that particular sweater. I have been working on the Roots and Shoots by Teti Lutzak, but um, I didn't put much time into it while I was finishing that. I also did put some work into the Yell by Marie Wallen and picked out some new colors and finished the previous. So this is my current progress on the Yell. And I really love this storm and yellow ochre paired with this green. And I have moved on to Tundra and Camel for the next color duo. I really love that Tundra color and it's been in every single one of the sweaters I've knit that has been by Marie Wallen. So I was super happy to pull that back into the fold <clears throat> here for this section of the sweater. I have a big uh, color work section coming up. So some of these have been smaller. Um, this one has a little bit more uh, patterning to it, multiple colors, so I'll need to give some thought to where I'm going to go with that. But in the meantime, I'm thoroughly enjoying uh, Tundra and Camel and the basic um, kind of Peary pattern that's evolving. So that's the yell. And then I did cast on uh -huh, for my uh, nephew um, the Hobbit vest by Lisa Chemery. And this is in Harrisville Designs Watershed. You can see it has some nice check texture. It's kind of, it's not a moss stitch um, and it's not a seed stitch, it's a double. I don't know the name of the stitch, um, but you kind of knit one by one, purl um, and knit and for two rows and then swap it. So there it is. Again, uh, Harrisville Watershed. I've gone up two needle sizes in this because the smallest size I didn't think would fit him very long. So I've gone up to a US 7 and I'm knitting the, I'm sorry, the largest size in this pattern would not fit him for very long. So I am knitting the largest size and I've gone up two needle sizes to a US 7 um, for that. And hopefully that he'll get a couple years worth of wear out of it. So that is The Hobbit Vest by Lisa Chemery. And that's really it for the knitting. Uh, today is my birthday. It is April 8th. If you have been following the um, astronomical news, you'll know that there is a full eclipse of the sun that is happening um, and this section of the state um, is going to have the full eclipse and I'm really excited to get out there. Hopefully you'll have seen some footage of that and with the GoPro. So I've got some planning to do and um, a couple other chores. So I'm going to bid you a fond farewell. I look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. In the meantime, many blessings and fond wishes. Bye.